first of all, I want to say I was like inspired. This is a little bit off topic of what I was uh, prepared to say, but I was really inspired by all the stories that you guys are working on. And I was, you know, we're talking at our table. I'm, my heart goes out to you. These are all stories that must be told. When I'm not doing my science work, I mean, my, I'm an advocate for public education in California. Ugh. Well, you know, it's kind of like the ninth largest global economy, 48th in public school funding per student. So, and part of my challenge on that side always, and it's interesting as a humorist, and I'm a mother of two children who attend public school in Los Angeles, is like how to make this story fresh. It's kind of like, you know, it's like the California budget always being cut. Uh, sort of kind of like wealthy businessmen, always their yacht tax is being cut so that a small child in Santa Ana, you know, it's kind of like their braces are falling out because there's no funding. You know, I always say puppies are being drowned to save $10 in California. So I think that many of the stories that we work on that are really important to communities are, are always really sad and awful. The music is all, the, the, the news is always bad in communities with community health and education and these underserved communities and they're just getting hit again and again and again. And so you keep trying to come to the public and tell these stories. I know certainly with my news directors at KPCC, it's kind of like, oh no, now the arts are being cut. There was one last standing teacher in the LAUSD. Uh, she was young, she was impressionable, she worked 90 hours a week, she handmade puppets for the children and took them all into her house and started a Shakespeare theater in her backyard. She was being paid $9 an hour. She gave five to the students and her job is being cut so an administrator could go to France and have caviar and and they won't cover the story. And you, you kind of have this sense of kind of like how can we make it so that people will run our stories. And so, which is a way of saying that my talk will, may seem trivial and superficial and fun, because there are jokes in it, uh, which is what we do on our science show, but know that I kind of like my heart is with all these stories that are every day that I see, certainly every day in my own kids' schools. And I think that the challenge as broadcasters and writers and, um, and, and journalists is to find a spin on these things to keep them fresh, because I, I think we've all uh, you know, stood in those offices with the news directors and said, you know, boring, move on, you go, you know, it's to try and, and, and keep changing the story so we can get this, these um, stories out there continually and, and refreshingly so. So, that being said, I will talk now about my show, The Lowdown on Science. So this, just as kind of a background of the um, architecture where this, this uh, this minute came from. This was Caltech. Caltech is a, you know, a university in Southern California. They had an idea to do a short segment that would run every day on public radio, and they got TIAA Craft to fund it. They wanted short spots because those are easy to drop in. We would like those five-hour series and the three-hour and the ten-hour, but you know, if you have 90 seconds, it's easier for them to scoot around and find a moment just before the hour to slip something in. And we had found, and I'm gonna share some of these scripts a little bit with you, of tinkering with this style. We found 60 seconds was too short because you just wouldn't get it, and 120 seconds was long enough to get ourselves into a little bit more trouble <laughs> than we wanted. Just that extra 30 seconds to give a little bit more that you can't quite fit into your head. So that we find, and I think Ira Glass had spoken about this in This American Life of kind of like, that there's kind of a, a, a kind of a lapse of a turn where here's a paragraph and then you wait for the next turn. You wait for the next turn. And it finds about in 90 second intervals. And I think in this picture we found 90 seconds was about the right time to give you, and Craig Curtis at KPCC calls it like one, a DJ spot with one thought. It's about a 90 second thought, in and out. And we experimented with the jokes and we found that in our early text, it's kind of like, yeah, we did a joke at a top. I might do a, a joke or two or three in the middle and joke at the bottom, that was too many jokes. We need a joke at the top, say in simple language what you're doing, joke at the bottom and you're out. Otherwise, that's too many jokes because we don't understand the actual science. So, that, and I'm gonna show you how that has gone awry a few different places. And, and we found that in doing these pieces and we have different kinds of science that come to us, um, how it works is they're a central editor at Caltech, and then there are freelancers all over the country that are continually reading the feeds and the press releases and kind of pitching her topics, and she has kind of a big library of 
what she's assigned, what we've covered. We usually have a lot of biological science because that world is really interesting. We never have enough physical science, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that, that is about. So we're trying to keep a mix, and of course, if Caltech can ever get in there with a discovery, we're going to put in as many Caltech pieces as we can. Uh, their enemy is MIT, so we're going to try to not have any MIT pieces. Sometimes we have to if they win a Nobel Prize, uh, but we get them from all over. Um, I'm just to keep a mix of, of a daily journal that's always out there. And I think sometimes we find our science facts just are generically interesting science facts. You know, like the fact that the, if you're, you're tuning your AM radio and you find hiss in the middle, well, you're hearing like part of the leftover, the Big Bang. Part of that hiss, you're, you're listening to the Big Bang. We find that like, you know, kind of like today we need longer needles to give vaccinations because our butts have gotten bigger. That's right, sir. That's a, that's a health story right there for you. Uh, we find, you know, and there are lots of interesting factoids, like you can grow pork chops in petri dishes today, or you almost can. And, or we have like in Asia, we have a new kind of tiny battery that's powered by urine. So see if you can work with me on this. So instead of a D cell battery, you have a P cell battery. You're hired. You're hired. That's 150 bucks for you right there. 150 dollars for 150 words, uh, and freelancing. So you know we just need a 10.99. You'll be fine. Um, so you see with some of these facts that start coming to you, like the science world starts to be so interesting. It's like it starts to suggest almost Monty Python-like punchlines or that kind of humor because the science world is so weird. The juxtapositions are so odd. You know, kind of like. Battery, urine, who knew? D cell, P cell, so that you start getting in this world, and that's what makes it fun for our listeners, is that they know a joke is coming at the end and one at the top, and so that we want to have a digestible kind of moment of science, and also they enjoy that. That's, that's kind of the combination. And I have to say for myself, you know, we are talking about, you know, paths in journalism and broadcast. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm 47. I've had no career path. And to my knowledge, I still have none. Uh, where I, I got a BS in physics uh, at Caltech, and I, I majored in physics because it was the top, only topic I did not understand. It was my worst field. So, I, but I figured if I majored in physics, I could be considered a Renaissance woman because nobody could, could say I was bad in physics. Turns that's kind of like I, I faked my way along. I was in such a fog at Caltech. I graduated. I was kicked out the door at the end. Um, I, I truly got a BS in physics, as I like to say. Uh, but I think that they like that combination, plus the fact that I think for me, there's a basic sense of, and you'll see in this example that I'm going to use, where I truly know what it is to be confused by science. I truly know what it is to go relief through the paper, see the science section with a big hairy diagram of something, of a reactor, and just skip it, and go to the, like the Sudoku or the crossword or something like <laughs> the horoscope. It's like, so I, I totally know, and my father was a, a, you know, a Chinese scientist. And as I like to say, um, you know, and, and so the Chinese scientists who wanted all our, uh, our, us children to go into science, but I went into the liberal arts, which to a Chinese father is like pole dancing. <laughs> So, uh, so I know, I sat around a kitchen table, you know, in my teens as my dad's going, no, it's a P junction, not an N junction. It's the electron negative or positive, like, and just bursting into tears. So I know what it is to be totally confused, to be talked to by a scientist who is an expert in their field. They're not bothering to remember what it's like not to be an expert. So they're relating to other terms that they know. And the more, more that you don't understand, the more and the more loud, the louder they start to shout at you like my dad. So it's kind of like, so I know truly what it is not to understand it. And that's why I rewrite like all our scripts so that it makes sense. And you're hearing it on the radio. So that is really, there's no diagram. We have to explain scientific concepts on the radio. And so I, I just have kind of this implacable. And since I went to Caltech already, I'm fearless about saying, I, I don't get this. Send it back. We're going to rewrite it because I don't get it. And some of the things that we've tried, we've never been able to explain on radio. 
I think of one example of like coffee. If you have a coffee cup, a travel mug, and the coffee is sloshing in the car, it will set up kind of this wave form that goes back and forth and begins kind of a torus and goes around. We were never able to explain it to our satisfaction. It's never been on the air. One day we'll be able to, like our 90 second explanation of string theory. Uh, we'll do that one day, but until I can understand it, I'm 47, I'm a little tired, I do have a BS in physics, but if I can't understand it, it's not gonna go on the air because it's not gonna make any sense.